Welcome to Palm Sunday at One Heart Church. It's my joy to be sharing with you on this very special Sunday. It's a, mo a moment in which we have a chance to be able to anticipate all that God has in store for us as we look towards the cross, as we look towards the grave, as we look towards the empty grave on next Sunday. Palm Sunday is a time to reflect on how prepared we are for what it is that God has in store for us. And we've been over the last few months studying 2 Corinthians. Today, we find ourselves in 1 Peter chapter 1 uh, as we reflect on Peter's focus. And if you think about it for a moment, Peter didn't understand everything related to what Jesus was up to, but here's what he did grasp. When he understood the importance of loving Jesus with all of his heart, when he understood what he was going to do with his life post-Jesus and the resurrection, that is when he understood that all the preparation, everything that he'd gone through was there to ensure uh, his impact in the world. So today, we look at preparations for the cross because we realize that uh, this coming Friday, uh, as, as we anticipate Easter season, is Good Friday, a day in which the Lord has done everything for us so that we could have life, have it abundantly, have it linked into God's great purpose for our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So today, as you think about that, my question for you is, are you preparing your heart for Easter? In other words, are you thinking through what it is that God has in store for you, what it is he wants to do in and through you, how he wants to shape your future, and how he wants to equip you uh, to be even more effective as you live out your life? You see, all of us are operating on a clock that is bound to heaven. He's numbered our days. He's destined our steps. He's even counted the hairs on our head, and, and he understands something about us. We all have opportunity. We all have purpose. We all have direction. But we have to choose that, to live that out. And so today, as we look into this, preparation demands some things of us. Pre preparation demands that we focus our hearts, surrender our wills, and release all distractions. Think about it for a second. Focus in on what it is God has for you. Think about how to surrender uh, your purpose to him and surrender our will to him so that he has even a greater opportunity to make a difference in our life. And think about for a moment what happens when we eliminate all distractions. We are bombarded with different things that come at us, that distract us, that challenge us. And so Peter understood that. And as he wrote this first letter, he, he gives us the opportunity to understand that our journey to the cross begins today. Today, as you're watching this, your journey to the cross begins. More than a spring break, more than some other activity, it is your journey to the cross that will define how you live your life out in this year and in the days to come. Because when we see the cross the way God intended, it changes us forever. You look at this screen closely, you realize that you see three crosses. You see two wooden crosses, you see a stained glass cross. What are they all pointing towards? They're pointing towards our opportunity to identify in the cross and recognize that the resurrected Christ is the answer to everything we'll ever face. Now, Peter, he got it. How do we know that? Look at Pentecost. Look at his ministry. Peter and John, others, they ended up making an eternal difference. You know, you and I, we can't miss that moment. We've got to grab it. We've got to use it. We've got to impact through it because this is God's opportunity for to use us. He is going to use us if we choose to follow him. So let's look at some verses. Let's see what, how, how Peter framed his thoughts. Remember, this first letter has, is profound and powerful, impactful in every way. He talks about relationships. He talks about uh, our, our personal relationship. He talks about how important it is that we uh, carry out our witness. There's just some amazing things in First Peter. I just wanted to dive in and see what he says in chapter 1 because he says some very key, uh, key insights that I believe Will and share some, some key insights I believe will help us be able to, to focus our hearts in on what God has for us, to surrender our will to his ultimate purpose, and to release anything that gets in the way of us experiencing Jesus the way he intended. Do you have anything that's in your way? Do you have anything that's a stumbling block or challenge? Do you have anything that seems to be getting the best of you? If you do, today is the day to say in your heart, I surrender my heart to you, Lord. I want to experience the cross the way you intended. Look, if you would, with me, beginning in verse 3 through verse 5. Blessed be the, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled, will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to reveal, be revealed in the last time. That promise, those insight, those thoughts, Peter anchored his heart and what the cross was all about. And he anchored his heart in understanding that Jesus had put forth for us the opportunity to live inside of his power, to rest our lives inside of his hope, to live inside of an experience that could be transformational for us day by day as we experience God's best for our life. Let's look on though. Look if you would at verse eight, notice what he says. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. What does he say here? You have the opportunity. I have the opportunity to experience a joy the world can never comprehend. That joy is not anchored in some other issue. It's anchored in the cross and what Christ has done for us. Though you have not seen him, you believe. That's what's amazing about the faith that we have. We have a faith that is pure and right. We have a faith that is anchored in truth. Look on one more verse, if you would. Verse 13, notice that the final verse here. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Wow. Prepare yourself. Fix your focus. Fix your heart. Get ready to act. Get ready to do what it is he wants you to do to be able to experience his best in your life. Today we dive into this text because as we celebrate Easter uh, and this coming Sunday, we have the privilege of baptizing a young lady who has given her heart to Christ. As we celebrate Easter, we die to the old life. We rise up to walk in a new life. What a great day it is for us to be able to gather together. And for those of you watching online, what a privilege it is for me to be able to share God's word. Uh, now into the third year of broadcasting this on a weekly basis, it's watched uh, by others as they tap into it. Uh, during the week to see who we're about. And perhaps you're watching us today uh, and you're not a part of One Heart, you live here in Atlanta area. I want to invite you to church on Palm Sunday. I want to invite you to church on Easter Sunday. Come and join us. Celebrate the resurrection with us. I assure you, it will be amazing. Now, let's look at this passage because I want to show you four very distinctive things that I, that I think are absolutely Im imperative for us to grab hold of. First of all, there's a guaranteed inheritance. You'll see this in verses three through five. He makes it clear that we have something that God has for us that no one can take away. It's not an inheritance that's subject to someone else's opinion. It's an inheritance that is affirmed by the very witness of God at work in our hearts and lives. No one can take that away. So what do we see here? First of all, like if you would, verse three, notice what he said. Blessed be the Lord and to be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercies has caused to be born again to a, a living hope, a living hope. First thing we see about this inheritance God has for us that he has planned for our lives is this. There's a living encounter with hope. In other words, something happens that changes who we are and it does everything that we anticipated it to do because it changes our way of looking at life. The second thing we see in verse four, you'll notice that he talks about how important it is that we understand that we have a reservation that cannot be revoked. It can't be canceled. It can't be something that comes, someone comes along and says, you know what, we've changed your reservation. A number of years ago, I was on a trip uh, in another country and and had made a reservation the year before at a particular hotel to stay and, and uh, was anticipating uh, being at this facility. And, and when I arrived, I said, okay, I'll be here. I'll be here for uh, six, seven nights. And so uh, I look forward to the stay. He said, well, I'm sorry, you can only stay here three nights because we booked the rest of your nights out to someone else. I said, you mean after a year I have lost the reservation? Yes, because someone else got your spot. They revoked my reservation. Out of that, by the way, came some great things because God planted me in a place that was much more uh, productive and meaningful uh, with a family there. And so here's what you see in verse four. Notice what he said. To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Don't you love the fact that the day will come uh, when all those who claim the name of Jesus will be in heaven together? What an amazing treasure that will be. Jesus came that we might have life, have it abundantly. The adversary seeks to destroy us, to seek to take it away from our focus. But what do we do? We claim our inheritance that cannot be taken away. Third thing you see in verse five, notice if you would, he says, we are protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So where does our protection come from? Our protection comes from our salvation. In other words, because we have encountered Christ at work in our life, that salvation transforms our lives, transforms our hearts. So today, as you think about that, 
Remember, what God has for you, no one can take away. It's a guaranteed inheritance. Verse 6 and 7, you see the second thing I want you to grab hold of today. Because when we endure, it leads us to more effective lives. It leads us to effectiveness. Look if you would uh, with me. And notice, because in verse 6, notice what he said. In this you greatly rejoice, even though for now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. It's interesting because we all do face trials. We have things that come at us that challenge us and, and come at our faith. But here's what you realize, that, that every trial is an opportunity to trust him more. If we start going through something, or we, we acknowledge, well, I trust you in this. I ask you to watch over me in that. And as we trust him, he changes. He changes our hearts and lives into something much more beautiful than we could ever do in ourselves. He is the one. He is the one who has made our lives beautiful. And how has he done that? By teaching us to endure. You see, sometimes you have to pay the price to ultimately accomplish what God intends. And so you and I, we're called on to endure. We're called on to go through different trials. But we're also tests that he sees. Look at you at verse 7, if you would have me. So the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire. Tested by fire. In other words, something very challenging. That would may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What's interesting what he says here is we're going to be tested by fire, but it's going to lead to praise. Tests lead us to praise him. So what happens is we go through a trial, we start trusting him. We go through a test, we start praising him. What does that mean? That means that our lives matter. That means that we're living out something he has in store for us. What a great, great promise for all of us. A third thing we see is this. So first of all, we have a guaranteed inheritance. Secondly, we endure because we become more effective. The third thing you see in verses eight and nine is the opportunity for us to understand that joy is a validator of salvation. Look at it with me, if you would. Verse eight, and though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. You see, here's what you discover. Faith leads to inexpressible joy. In other words, it's just something that comes over you. And, you know, during this course of a week or the course of a month, we encounter different trials, different tests. We encounter different thoughts that we have to contend with. And we looked last week about how important it is that we take every thought captive. So here's what, what happens. When his joy begins to rest on us and our faith is absolutely anchored in Christ, it becomes so inexpressible we can't even express it all. I love the joy of the Lord. It's something that brings me great, great delight and i know he also brings delight to your heart as you joyfully connect yourself into his purpose a second thing you see is it and that is look if you would at verse 9 with me obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your soul what's the end result of all challenges it's heaven it's heaven jesus goes to prepare a place for us if he goes he'll come again he'll receive us that where he is there we may be also what is his promise to us? It's life with him forever. How could you not want to trust Jesus? How could you not want to encounter him when he is the very one who's going to give you the opportunity to experience his very best for your life? Today, think about it for a moment because joy is a validator of our relationship with Christ. The final thing we see uh, is wrapped up in verses 10 through 13. And it's something I want you to get out, grab hold of, especially on this Palm Sunday, because what we're doing, we're preparing our hearts for the cross. And the way we do that is understand that we have an inheritance, understand that we are, must endure, understand that joy is validated in our salvation. And finally, we have to understand the results of all prophecy because Peter recognizes the prophets foretold what was going to transpire. They made it very clear. We read Isaiah, we read others, we realize that they made it very clear that the Lord would be the answer to everything we would ever face. And it shaped all of Peter's life, just like it shapes your life and mine. Look, if you would, verse 10, notice what he said. As, this, uh, as to the salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made cert careful searches and inquiry. You see, what you realize very quickly is he's the answer to, he's the answer to all that was foretold. In other words, everything prophetically aligns with the reality that Christ in us is the hope of glory. Christ on the cross was the answer to our sin. Christ coming out of the grave was the affirmation of our salvation that we have a chance to be able to trust in a living God who listens and intercedes for us, always at the right hand of the Father. You and I see this as the answer with all the prophets. Look at verse 11, if you would, and 12. 
seeking to know what person or time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glory to follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but to you. And these things which now have been announced to you through, through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent, Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Isn't it interesting? Even the angels want to see what's going on here. And here's what we realize. The Holy Spirit's presence in our lives it is actually the, is affirmed. It affirms Jesus and who he is. You see, when the Spirit of the Lord comes into our hearts and lives, we know Jesus is up to something really amazing. He's the best of the best. He meets us at the point of our greatest challenge and takes us straight to the cross where we can see what he has done for us because what he's done for us, we can never do for ourselves. A final thing you see here as this message uh, concludes and wraps together, because I want, you to get, I want you to walk into Easter week with a very clear preparation in your heart. Make sure you're willing to endure. Make sure you're willing to uh, validate but through joy. Make sure you're willing to understand that it all fits together. Look, if you would, verse 13. It says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you by the revelation of Jesus Christ. What's he say here? You encounter his grace to set your direction for all of life because his unmerited favor that rests on your life is linked into our understanding of how he wants to work in our lives. And as we prepare ourselves for the cross, it is by grace that we're saved, not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. May you be challenged today to experience Easter in a new, amazing, and wonderful way. And my question is simply this for you. Are you prepared for Easter? Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the amazing opportunity to look inside of your word. Peter made it clear that the reality is that we will go through difficulty. We will be tested. We will go through challenges, but the joy of the Lord, the grace of God, the Holy Spirit at work, our preparation, preparing our minds to be able to fight through things, all that links us into your eternal purpose. Lord, we trust you and we bless you and we praise you on this very day. Lord, help our hearts be prepared to experience Easter. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, God bless you all for joining me. I hope you've been encouraged and I hope you've been motivated. I hope you're challenged to look at this week differently as a result of seeing this message because Easter's coming. The resurrected Lord, he is risen. Indeed, he is risen for you and I to experience life the way he intended. God bless you. Have an amazing and powerful and meaningful Easter week.